This tutorial will cover the first three tabs in FSL's Feet tool. Specifically, we'll be covering the Miscellaneous, Data, and Pre-Stats tabs. Let's start with the Miscellaneous tab. Most of these can be just left as the default, uh, but for example, you can change things like whether the balloon help will pop up if you hover your mouse over a certain option, like that and the progress watcher, which will generate HTML files as each step in feed completes, which you'll see later. The brain background threshold will try to determine whether a voxel is part of the brain or part of the background based on a fraction of the maximum intensity voxel. So for example, if the maximum intensity voxel has an intensity of 100 arbitrary units, then any voxel with 10 or more intensity units will be considered brain and anything less than that will be considered non-brain. And this can be useful when trying to calculate masks for your data. These last three fields refer to different aspects of design efficiency by estimating things like the amount of noise in a certain voxel or in an average voxel in your data set and the amount of temporal smoothness present in your bold response because, as we know from the literature, the time courses in an fMRI data set are temporally autocorrelated. After you load your 4D data set, you can estimate these, but usually this will be taken care of anyway in the stats tab, so it's fine to leave those as a default for now. The data tab allows you to specify different parameters of your 4D fMRI data set. Now you can have multiple data sets to be analyzed, but this assumes that each data set is going to be analyzed the exact same way. In other words, the timing and the sequence of conditions will be the same for each run for each subject. Now, I don't know of many experiments that actually do this, but if that happens to fit your experimental paradigm, you can go ahead and use it. For right now, I'm just going to select one input. And this is within the data set that I posted online. And it's going to be, for right now, S005, A001. And hit OK. Now, after we've filled that in, we notice that the total volumes has already been automatically filled in. It estimates how many volumes there were based on header information from your data set. Now, if you go back and make sure that that actually was the amount of volumes in that functional run. However, these other three boxes have not been automatically filled in. For example, this default TR of 3, it's actually a TR of 2 for this particular data set. Deleting volumes allows you to account for any sort of higher intensity initial images as the scanner reaches a steady state. However, with our scanner, the first two images are automatically discarded in order to account for this. So for right now, I'm going to leave that as zero. Lastly, this high pass filter cutoff will remove any very low frequencies. For example, scanner drift or other artifacts that occur over a long period of time. In this case, with a cycle of 100 seconds or greater. Now, this may remove information if you have a condition that is present for, say, 100 seconds or longer. But if you actually have a condition that is 100 seconds or longer for a single trial, you might want to consider the fact that you are deranged. Lastly, the Pre-Stats tab covers typical pre-processing steps in any fMRI data analysis. First, FSL's McFlirt is FSL's traditional motion correction algorithm, which will try to match all of the volumes within a given run to the middle volume in that run. Field map on warping can help if you are interested in areas of the brain that are located next to areas susceptible to signal dropout or artifacts, such as cortical patches near sinuses or, say, the orbital frontal cortex. If you acquire a field map, you'll be given two images. One of them will be the phase, which should go in this top field here, and the other one will be magnitude, which should go here. The rest of these parameters you should get from your scanner or from your technician. 
For right now, I'm not going to be doing field map and warping, so I'll be leaving that blank. Slice time and correction is important because all the slices that we acquire in a given volume are not acquired instantaneously at the same time. Acquiring each slice takes a slight amount of time from slice to slice, and so in order to correct for that, we try to shift everything so it is as if the entire volume was acquired at a single instantaneous time point. The slice time and correction algorithm depends on the sequence of slices that you acquired. For example, with this regular up option, this assumes that you acquired the bottom slice first and then the first slice in the Z direction and so on in a consecutive order. In my case, and what is far more common, is interleaved slice acquisition, where all of, say, the even slices were acquired, and then all of the odd slices. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. This bet brain extraction, which is on as a default, refers to brain extraction for your functional images, not for your anatomical images, which you should take care of in the bet tool outside of feet. This is important for a future co-registration step when we try to co-register our functional runs to the anatomical. Spatial smoothing refers to averaging data from nearby voxels. And this has the advantage of increasing your signal to noise ratio because any present signal will be averaged and summated while noise, which presumably should be random, will be canceled out. There's a trade-off with spatial smoothing kernels because very large kernels will boost your signal to noise ratio and make it very high. But at the same time, it can smooth over large areas of cortex and subcortical regions, and it can eliminate any sort of spatial resolution at millimeters below your kernel size. So for example, if you're interested in imaging the amygdala, if you have a smoothing kernel of, say, 10 millimeters or greater, you might not be able to resolve and tease apart the contributions from amygdala as opposed to nearby areas. Intensity normalization is off as a default. What this will do, if you turn it on, is it will attempt to make the intensity match a certain preset constant. So in other words, all of the intensity across the entire volume will be scaled so that the mean intensity across the entire volume is matching this preset constant. Now, this can introduce some biases because it can artificially deflate the amount of variance observed in your data. So that's why it's selected off as a default. These temporal filtering options refer to the high-pass filter, which we specified previously in the data tab, and also whether you want to do any sort of perfusion subtraction. Now, this is only if you're doing perfusion fMRI, which we are not doing here. We're doing traditional bold fMRI analysis, so we're going to leave that off. Lastly, melodic ICA data exploration will allow you to decompose your data into several independent components. And this can be useful when you want to isolate certain components as being associated with your conditions or effects of interest, and can also be used to remove things like artifacts due to motion and other sources of noise. This concludes the first half of the FEET interface, and in the next tutorial we'll be, we'll be covering the last three tabs.